Digital Dreams is the largest electronic dance music festival in Canada. Set on the shoreline of Toronto, the two-day event offers partygoers an experience unlike any other. In its third year, it hosts 102 artists performing on four stages to a crowd of 75,000. This year's mega lineup included high-energy sets from DJs all across the globe. First stop, a little one-on-one -on -one time with the DJ Godfather. Nicknamed the Trance King, Dutch musician Tiesto is one of the biggest electronic dance music producers in Europe and has paved the way for the next generation of DJs all over the world. The new album is called A Town Called Paradise, and I've heard you say that everyone has their own version, their own town of paradise, so to yeah. speak. So if you were to paint us a picture of your ideal paradise, what would it entail? For me, A Town Called Paradise at the moment is, is uh, Las Vegas. You know, it's a, it's a great town where you can party hard and have amazing uh, entertainment. Anything you want is there, so it's, it's a great city and you don't have to see anybody for days if you want. You worked with some Canadian ladies, yes. uh, Chigan and Sarah and Nelly Furtado. And one of your breakout hits was Delirium with Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah. So what is it about the Canadian ladies that you love so much? Uh, first of all, the, the Canadian ladies are very pretty oh, and yeah. very talented because there's so many great uh, songwriters here and, and musicians. It's, uh, it's incredible. Because you forgot to mention Emily Haynes. Oh, yes. Who's also Metric, a, who's Metric. The, the, the queen of cool. She's, the queen of cool. Yeah. You know, it's, she's amazing too. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's so many great artists. Toronto's own Keys and Crates were a crowd favorite. Formed in 2008, the band has had great success this year with their internet hit, Dum Dee Dum. At Digital Dreams, they were excited to be back in Toronto on home soil. I'm here with some of my favorite people, Keys and Cray. So what do you think it is about the scene in Canada that makes it so familial and you're all kind of... I think because everyone does it really straight off for the passion and love first because there isn't a lot of money in it. So anyone who stays with it is doing it for what pure love. What are you talking about? Canadians get like millions of dollars. Oh yeah, we're falling like so, you know. So I want to talk about the live instruments thing. Uh, that's how basically how we started was the three of us jamming in a rehearsal room for like six months and it was really organic how it all came together and then we kind of progressed from there doing and then we started getting into doing more hip hop stuff and then more bass music and kind of just progressed right from actually rehearsing live and then came the production afterwards. So I think that's pretty much our roots is as a live band. So I know you guys love to make people dance. So if you were going to bring back a dance move, what would it right, be? I actually started bringing back the running man. I, I did. Yeah. In, yeah. Fact, in fact, fact, he can show you right now. I would like yeah. to see it. I would like to see, <laughs> it. <laughs> I would like to see it. I can tell you that that's definitely not going to happen. Yeah, I'd bring back probably Hammer's crab dance that he did, you know, oh, yeah. and I'd try to get the crowd to go one from left to right and all that stuff. I think that'd be fun. Stop. Hammer time. Former models, Australian twins Mim and Liv Nervo, have taken the EDM world by storm, and flipping samples has never looked so good. They have pen songs for Kesha and Pussycat Dolls and have remixed pop songs with North America's biggest names in music, including Katy Perry, Beyonce, and Cyndi Lauper. So when you're creating your own music, is it more precious to you? Well, I wouldn't say more precious, but it has more pressure. It does. So anything we do for ourselves, we have to always think, okay, is this something that Nervo stand for? Would we would we relate to this or would our fans enjoy it? It's, it's So we have to think about it more. Sometimes when we write for other artists, it's nice because there's no ba there's less boundaries. Or you, you not just that, you just delve into their world. Yeah, so you, you put on a different hat. It's predominantly a male art form, like the EDM, but how did, did you face any sexism when you were entering or were you kind of embraced with open arms? We were so lucky because yeah. our journey was slightly different in the way that we had worked for a lot of the boys behind the scenes for many years before we decided to come come out. <laughs> so we had so much support. Can we talk about the outfits quickly though? Who are your style inspirations? Because I've been looking at all your outfits. This is a little, I don't want to touch Slim your Shady. Right <laughs> it's okay, you can touch Slim Shady, it's fine. Last but not least, two of the nicest guys in the industry with the most aggressive music and name took some time to chat with us. They created Thugly only two years ago and were hugely influenced by hip hop culture. Together with up and coming director Amos LeBlanc, they took home hardware for the controversial video Run This at this year's MMVAs. And we have a little bit of a history we together. Do, we yes, do. we do. We went to university together. You don't even know this. And we stayed up till like five o'clock in the morning making our own music videos, wanting to stab our eyes out. Hell yeah. And now I'm here congratulating you oh. on your MMVA. Thank you, for thank your you. Video we, made, we made some pretty good videos together too, right? Yes, yes. All right.
no doubt. But what was it about it that stood out to you? It was very much like a short film to us. You know, it was something that conveyed a message where you could take whatever you want from it. Uh, the cycle of misuse of power. Yeah, I mean, Amos and OG did such a great job directing it. I mean, it was a masterpiece. We run this.